Alright, so we have the sideboard plans for you guys, and Chase is going to talk about what he's taking out, what he's putting in, and then Daryl's going to talk about his sideboard changes as well. So I'm going to be bringing in two glimpses of Kaguya's uh, to help stop his god art, because that, if you saw last game, that's really what kind of hurt me a, lot, a whole lot. Uh, one send back, uh, in case he's bringing in Barrier, and because he's playing the cats, and it's just a nice tempo play to like bounce the cat and then, like go in and kill your ruler. I'm um, also bringing in two Robo the Fire Rats because he is playing red, so there is a chance that he's going to be bringing in Susan O's. And I just need something to deal with the Susan O's for Mike Wybers. So uh, uh, I will be taking out Wind Sprite, two Hera's, a Glefnir, and an Alice's World because Alice's World because he kills a lot of my dudes and it's going to be expensive most of the time, so it's not very good. Glefnir because most of the stuff I want him to block is bigger than what I have. And Harris because I didn't see any zero cost regalia, and Wind Sprite just because it's like an additional one mana producer. Uh, my sideboard plan is pretty simple. I'm taking out the Elizabeth, like Cosmo was talking about during the match. I think it's just a win more card most of the time. I mean, I still think the card's good in a lot of matchups, but this is not one of them. Uh, I'm taking out a Labathin. I don't need my J Ruler to have A's. He doesn't really have any ways to deal with it. And in return, I'm bringing in the Barrier of Shadows. To stop the orb activations, you know, his judgment costs him. Like, it's just another way to, to pressure his mana. You know, and, like, I thought about bringing the Susans in, but I don't feel like I need to. Like, I don't need the Susans to kill the Gwyver because I have 15, 16 different ways to deal with it. So I'm just going to have a simple cyborg plan of bringing Barrier of Shadows. Stop the card draw, stop the token, or the counters. Tokens? There's tokens, tokens, tokens in Force of Will? No, I'm not ready for that. I wish. I'm I'm not not ready for I would the... love some Force of Will tokens, actually. I'm not for the ready for the token token sprint decks. Oh god, yes please. Exactly why no. we should have some kind of token generators. No. I, I would 100% be playing the Gretels into token spam into sprint deck. The old triple Gretel turn two. Oh yeah, that, if you haven't watched another video where I just had triple Gretel uh, against Daryl. Uh, it felt amazing. It did turns not. out, little triple labor team did not feel amazing. Pretty good turn two. So a very good turn two. It turns out. So sorry guys, just adjusting the camera a little bit. Just but six sages things. We cast my eight eight on turn two. So eight Chase two. will be able to play for this game. We're gonna be doing two additional games. You know, we'll. This is obviously gonna run over the round timer, but we want to play uh, two sideboard games, uh, and regardless of who wins or whatnot, we'll just switch simply because you're gonna be playing more sideboard games, and you actually will be playing. <clears throat> your game ones. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Unless, of course, you 2 0 the entire event or get 0 2 would then you play exactly the same amount of sideboard and main deck matches. Oh, I feel like I'm still playing Dark Alice. Oh, wait. Man. Still playing oh, Reflect. Yeah. Just, uh... Like, I, I thought about bringing in Vlad, but, you know, that's just. We don't have time for that. I got things to do tomorrow. I mean, I think if you're good with it, you should. Is play. that a ball five? No, three. Oh. So my opening hand is. Oh yeah. Spice. All right. That's kind of exactly what you're looking for in this matchup. So I'm going to keep yeah, all five of them. I would have those. I would have I mean, maybe it's a little greedy to keep this one, but I need you this. Keep all. You yeah. Ball? No, I'm, I'm going to keep them. Uh, yeah, I would have filtered the card that you were pointing to. Like I keep this because of this. Without this, I probably mold this. Yeah. Oh! Got him, coach. Oh, look at this. Always coming to play. Are upside down. Hey, look, my stone's coming to play on time. I don't. That's neat. Boom, Barrier of Shadows. That's what we want our turn one That's also neat. Go ahead. So, slowing down their orbs and making a cost attached to it really hurts the Owl's World decks. Like, anything you can do to slow them down from drawing 15 cards in a turn is where you want to be. And a lot of things. Uh, not a lot of people realize, but Alice's World decks are essentially a combo deck. It's just very resonator driven. So if they miss their turn one, they are going to be hurting a lot in that matchup. Like with my turn one play being Barrier of Shadows and his first stone coming to play on top, like that's pretty good. Also, you know, it's pretty good to be casting at Adam Broly though. We thought we had him. We thought we had him, but they never had him. I mean... I bet you I get another black mana. <laughs> Stone it up. Slide your barrier over to the right just a tad. There we go. Even though it's cleared out, but just as a reminder that it's there. And just for those, a reminder that everyone's home. It's everyone for a uh, 
Activated abilities are Galia, and also judgments cost one more. So simply act making them have to pay one to flip, reflect, Flying refrain man. is going to be really taxing on Chase's deck. Hmm. It's okay, because apparently I didn't start with any regalia in this game, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Uh, I think our best turn to play here is just do this. And we're going to go look for another one. Because what we're doing is we're, we're setting up for the other card that we have in our hand. Cinderella, Cinderella. Because that card is just super good against these decks. All set? Yep. Go. Uh, filter. Again, it's one of those situations where we could drop block the Adam Broly, but we're at 40 and... You know, like taking six at this point in the game is not really that big of a deal. And that didn't help that much. Copper code. Nope. Hey, yeah, sorry for the glare, guys. We're still trying to work on that. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people on our channel said that they appreciate the home recording videos, so at least you can hear, clearly hear what both players are saying, but you lose the ability to. See some of the cards at the time. Whew! That Windcat getting in damage. Like, here's the thing. Like, I think I want to block with it because he can just sack the Windcat and kill it anyway. But. It does shrink down his Alex. Uh, but he knows. I mean, he's probably playing around this card. So I think. Wait, I'm, did he filter already? Or did he yeah, I filter already. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, he's going to block, yeah. The reason being is that she was probably going to die anyway. It just makes more sense to not take the damage. Yep. Yeah. And we did tutor for another one, so we can just start the Laura train. He still is going to have to pay one to pay for the horns effect. Um, I think we're just going to pass here. Drop for turn. For you on tap. I'm going to do Endless Knight with Quiver. Quiver, Adam Broly. Or the Adam Broly. I'm just so used to killing the wrong cards. <laughs> I'm killing the big guy. Again, like we talked about last game, it makes sense to do it. The, the right place to do it at the beginning of their turn. No cut? Watch this guy put all the cats back on top. I don't know the cats are going to die anyways. I mean, still gets to draw a card off of them. I do still get to draw a card off of them. Not bad cancellation points. It's, it's basically brainstorm at that point. Filter. It's a better brainstorm than what she Six brainstorms. Or if you like chase and just have it all. So again, in this game, like you had in game one, Endless Knight puts a lot of pressure on the Alice's World player where they can't really play things favorably and they lose a lot of tempo on their turn. I think that's an important thing to note about this deck. You don't really play it like a control deck. You play it more like a tempo deck. Yeah, cool. And and there is a difference between uh, a control and a tempo deck. Yeah. I feel like that's right. He probably didn't have anything else to do with his mana. And then, like, he, well, he wants to keep me from Jay activating Alice. So it makes perfect sense to do it. Okay. I'll also do it. You got it. That's turn. Call Stone. Alright, we finally hit blue mana. We're in business. <laughs> Had to have it eventually. Oh, that's just. Uh, How good is that? I mean, do we want to, uh, we have two I, I, bl I believe the phrase here is must be nice. I mean, I did just watch Chase have it all, so I deserve something. You put a card back? I did put a card back. Yeah, you did. What do I do? You say go. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> like, there was a decision to make to like play this and do this, but I think we're just going to hang on to this. Put it together. You got it. Yeah. 
That was probably not. So. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's fine. we'll just do that instead. Again, your life totals Cheshire? is not being sure. Yeah, I mean, if you're not under not being threatened at like, all, you don't have to kill everything that he plays. Yes, you do. No, you just gotta kill the stuff that's gonna kill you. Like, and that, that's what I was mentioning about the, one of the difference between a tempo deck and a control deck is with a control deck, you know, you're. I don't want to say you just kill everything, but with a tempo deck. Where you're trying to beat him up and control the board, instead of just straight control the board till you're just so far ahead, you just kill him with a two-two or something. Right. Uh, I'm going to respond. This is maybe not the best feeling in the world, but I'm gonna have flames or more Okay. I mean, not exactly what I wanted to do with the guard, but but also doing this. He can't re Chase can't respawn the flames, and it puts a card in the graveyard that Daryl can then eat with his one extra will. Or if he wants to play another one drop, like a demon flame or a thunder, that still has the open will available for that. Oh, that's there. Ah, uh, I'm gonna eat your margin. Or exile it from your graveyard. It's gone. No longer there. Forever and ever. Excuse it? What? We're down to 11. Uh, call stone. Name black. Oh, we're. we're, we're I'm firing on all cylinders now. Um, okay, this is where we start to do things. <laughs> Cast Hera. Going to target. We change the world. I think you just always take the orb. Yeah. Draw. Hmm. Like, I think we just do this for all the value. One place, Cinderella. Sure. Um, Sack the cat. Trigger. Excellent. Okay. I still shuffle, correct? Yeah. Yes, you still shuffle. This is a thing you can do. You can exile Cheshire Cats with the trigger on the side. You can also do it with Rasputin. It gets a little fuzzy depending on whose turn it's <laughs> on, but it's a thing you can do. Especially against the Incarnation decks. Um, if you're going against the Incarnation deck and you flip Dark Alice, your opponent just immediately cries because that entire deck resolves, or, uh, revolves. revolves around having that Rasputin in their deck because you want to use your life total as a resource. So I played against the Incarnate decks a lot. Wait, did that just come into play? Or was it last round? No, it was last round. Okay. Uh, no, it was this turn. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was the orb. The oh, orb yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, hold on. Reverse, reverse! Big cheats. I can't attack! Don't touch it! I can be that sack there. In my turn. Uh, drop. Uh, Oh, you cost a little I got it, I got it. Just trying to catch it. Alright, we're good. We got there. I mean, we can accuse each other of cheating, but if Cosmo does it, hold this uh, moment. Seriously. What's this guy thinking right here? All set? Yeah. I'll do it. Uh -oh. uh -oh. My have adult beverages involved at this point. <laughs> As Daryl takes a big sip. Mm. So like I was saying about the incarnation decks yesterday, we had a stones tournament at Gamers Moment, and, uh, like you said, the deck revolves around Rasputin, and these kind of decks are super good against decks like that because every one of your stoning adepts is like a three for one. Like they're incarnating at two guys, sometimes three, and they pass you end a turn. I stoning to death the guy that you just killed two or three of your other guys to play. It's just it's a tremendous, tremendous play. Yeah. I mean, I, don't, I, I played the Incarnation decks, I think they're cool, but, like, getting Zeke's or, like, having a Stony to death hit one of your Incarnate guys is just not a good feeling. That's why I stopped playing it. Well, Yogg is really, really good right now if you're going to a tournament and expecting no one to play uh, Zeke's. Watch your feet. Um, Yogg, you know, coming to play, being a 1500, 1500 with Pierce, 
and having the ability to wipe the board of all two drops is very, very relevant right now. Kills Lancelots, can Stone Cold kill else world decks. It, it has a lot of value in the deck. I actually thought about putting one in here just because, like, Alice's world has such a hard time dealing with it. You know, because you go, I'm going to kill your whole board, here's a 15 15, go. And it's also bigger than McWyver with a pump, which is relevant. Head blue. You got it. Again, Chase here, probably just looking for the Gwyber since he has, you know, six more cards he can look at. So you can't judge from this turn, right? Correct? Me? No, I cannot. I can. Yeah, he is. I did, in fact, call a stone. Back to it. Yep. Pass so, there. uh, they're off camera, but Chase is sitting at two cards. He's got a counter right there. Is that off camera? Uh, I mean, that's for my fellow's counter. That is right. That, that, that looks like that's in frame still. Uh, I'm going to call a stone, since Chase wants to ruin. Foil my plans. <laughs> of, of exiling his graveyard and judging my allies. Hmm. This is... I mean, a play that we should need to make in here. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Judge? What do I do? Well, you could have judged it this turn. He, he doesn't have a graveyard. I don't have a graveyard. And I don't have three. You could have made one. Alright, fine. I always have to Outside help. assistance, man. Uh, I'm gonna play here, uh... Get the orb. I just want to let the uh, players know what cards I had. Probably what would have been the correct play. I didn't have any other mana decks on here. No, but you could have went like Thunder into Judgment because you have two cards removed already. I mean, I can do it right now, too. Yeah, thanks for telling me. No, you can't because your ruler's tapped. Oh, right. right. So savaged. Uh, and especially when your opponent only has one cards in hand. So for those watching at home, I can't stress enough that uh, Dark Alice, it is very, as Daryl will say, it's more of a tempo focus where you want to be aggressive oh, with Dark oh, Alice. Sorry. And I will pass my turn. Draw. Before you want that, I'm going to cast everyone's favorite card at this night. Hmm. I didn't know Endless Night was a card until this morning, and I don't know how I lived my life without <laughs> it at this point. Mm. And again, that's the uh, advantage of uh, kicking the stand. <laughs> so that's the advantage of having a team, uh, especially with being friends with the head judge, um, that oh, has oh, a deep knowledge. <laughs> having a deep knowledge of the card base can really help. So teams really help you know, each other analyze cards and figure out what, what might be the missing cards from a deck. Oh, for the different one. Um, sure. Three cards in your hand? Uno. Confirms the one? Confirms zero. One, so one card. You have three cards in your favor, right? Uh -huh. Uh, that happens to be a very good number of cards for you to have. Exile has said three cards. Judgment by yeah. Dark Alice. I will name one. It's dead. Pew! I will then Godzar. I will glimpse the Godzar. Oh, he got no. me! No! <laughs> he uh, got there. <laughs> Wait, no game! I'm gonna lose because Swing of it. Swing for four. Yeah, I'm at three. Swing for five? I mean, I do still have a 9-9, nine -nine, so go ahead. I mean, but, I mean, not getting to search for the Schrodinger's Cat here and get the Godzar, uh, which would have made a Dark Alice a 14-14, is very very relevant now. I mean, it's it's not good, but now Chase gets to freely untap and hopefully set up. Yeah. That's going to be a very strong turn for him. I don't mean to brag, but Chase needs a pretty strong turn. More yeah. That's a good place to start. I mean, Morgana and the cat. Oh, oh. The cats. we're drawing twelve cards a turn. They must go on the very bottom of the deck. This gets so excited when he glimpses that Godzar. You just see it shine in his face. It's like it, it's Force of Will Christmas Land. I get to glimpse the Godzar. And uh, especially with the next set with uh, 
uh, Gil Lapis, is that his name? I forget what the darkness one yeah. is. Like, Glimpse oh, of Kaguya God. is going to become a very relevant card. Glimpsing that card is going to be the best feeling in the world. Double Blimey. Oh, man. You did it. Calls down. Calls down. I can't judge, right? Draw. Oh boy. I mean, that was a good turn, right? I mean, it was a good turn. It was <laughs> a good turn. That, you're basically forcing him to have double removal on this turn for the Gwybers. Which, to be fair, Daryl hasn't really casted a lot of either Stonings. And he's casted two Endless Knights at this point, so that does hurt a little bit, but um, it's definitely mm -hmm. within the realm of reason to get those cards. Or double Cinderella Sack into Flames and Stoning would be another play. Uh... Dark far you were the weakening. You have one hundred percent color blind right here. Hmm. Okay, so. Actually one. Alright, I'll stop with the outside assistance again. I gotta take a minute to think here. So he definitely had a uh, board wipe this turn. Uh, that you know, you're not you're not always going to see the perfect line of play uh, and enforceable, you know, especially when you're playing a large number of events. Uh, but there is a way where he would have had a complete board wipe and be able to swing to his opponent for uh, 1,300 damage, putting Chase to 12. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Uh, let's see. Oh, which you can still do. Is that Scorch Bales? Those are, those are Scorch Bales. Okay, so never mind. He can still do it. He didn't mess up yet. Uh, mess up yet. <laughs> um, stack to Cinderella for 200 year board. Stack to Cinderella for 200 year board. So he has 400? Mm -hmm. Sack it for. Well, What's, what's what I'm missing? Do I, is, is it double Ender? Yes. Or is it Laura? It's double Ender. Well, hold on. Wait, I, two, four, six, eight. No, I do. Yeah, I think you do this, don't you? Six. Two, eight. four, six, eight, thirteen. Dude, George, you gotta give you this. <laughs> you gotta give this. All right, so the play I was talking about, since we're all aware of it now, I was talking about the double Thunder. I didn't see the Laura in his hand, so he could go double Thunder on the Gwyber to attack for thirteen. Or he can go Laura Thunder and have a Thunder for the next turn, uh, presenting then Lethal hopefully on his next turn if he had yeah, like a Stony to Death for this. Whatever the Dark Alice blocks. Uh, then we're gonna. Uh, we're I gonna thought he had one more will available. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm gonna. Uh, this might be the saddest feeling in the world. I think we're gonna do this. I'm gonna. We're gonna leave these on that. I'm gonna call a Stone first. Okay, then I'm gonna tap this and this to cast Alora to keep my Thunder available. So my Jade Ruler's tapped. I'm gonna sack this to the Cinderella, then I'm gonna Thunder it. Yeah, that's what you do. Then you super four. Was it only 11? What? I sacked. You sacked three plus the Thunder? Three guys? No. Oh, then. Two, four, six, I'll... 11. Okay, we'll sack this then. Do that. Yeah, we figured it out, boys. And then I will pass my turn. So with a double with a double thunder play, he could have also attacked for twelve hundred total. But the reason I didn't is because I wanted the Carmilla for his follow up play. Like if he plays like anything, I'm I'm just gonna kill it with Carmilla. Yeah, and especially when he has one card in hand, um, Daryl's feeling pretty good about this game regardless. And I I, th I always want to thunder their face. That's just maybe it's not always the right play, but it's always what I wanted to be doing. Yeah, I mean like I don't. We got 25. You have one card? Okay. Okay, that's pretty good. I mean, we're probably just gonna put that back. Uh, I wanted to find a cat, but well, I'll stay here for nine. Not this cat, my Schrodinger's cat. I mean, at this point, Daryl just wanted to have it all, but Spiral he, despair. he pretty much won the game when he got was able to get rid of the double Gwyber turn. Uh, Thunder you. I mean, 
We're gonna play with Cinderella. And we'll pass the turn. Like, I'll, I'll admit that I, I take lines of play that other people don't generally agree with because I like to play super, super, super safe. Maybe spend a couple more resources to do it, but... And again, to be fair, in, in the TCG, TCG world, you almost yeah. never want a two for one yourself regardless. Nope. So Chase is just trying to play out of Broly here to live in a couple extra turns. Hopefully he doesn't get met with a stoning, something of that nature. Daryl has the flames to end the game and attack for 13. Uh, Chase could bounce here with Reflect, or sorry, Refrain, but it's mostly irrelevant in, at this point, at this stage in the game. Daryl turned the corner, Reflect Refrain has a really, really bad time trying to deal with J Rulers. So we'll be going into our last game. Uh, Daryl will be on the play for this match just for the sake of alternating who goes first or second. Uh, they're going to keep their sideboard cards in and all that jazz, and then we'll, uh, I'm going to cut the cut the video so they don't have to deal with all the shuffling stuff, and we'll be right back with Game 3. Alright guys, welcome to Game 3. Daryl's going to be on the play. Again, uh, Chase lost the last game, but we're just alternating who goes first uh, to show you what impact that can have on the game. We did resolve Mulligans already, so we're getting right into Game 3. Good. Surprise, he's going to win again. <laughs> Shh! You don't know. you got to keep the faith, Chase. you got to keep the faith. I mean, there, there might be a chance for the Alice's role player to win. I mean, that's, that's a good step one. And this is Chase, our ARG Player Appreciation uh, Event Champion winner. To be, to be honest, I have never beaten Chase in a constructed tournament in anything ever. You probably will never beat Chase. Right? I mean, that's, that's a fair assessment. <laughs> There's a strong chance. And Chase with the daggers because uh, we all agree that he's probably just not winning this game. Uh, I'm going to do it more Pretty uh, much. pointed at me. No, Josh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play me. Wait, player what? is not a legal target for Demon Flame, so we're gonna rewind the game to the point of him casting it. <laughs> Demon Flame refrain. Resolves. Cannot deal damage to something that has no. No. How do you kill that which has no life? <laughs> Chase Wax and all philosophical. Then he does Woo! that. Holy smokes. Hey, Black. You gotta do. How greedy are we? We're super greedy, bro. <laughs> Ding! You gotta do two oh. count. I mean, just, just do it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to. Stack the two cats. I'll put it down. Yeah. Go ahead. So, I don't know if you picked up on this or not, but Cinderella is an absolute beating for this deck. It's what? An absolute beating. It's what? An absolute 100% straight up beating. What is it? It's good. It's good. I hear it's good. Is it good? It shrek you, that's what it is. Judge. Is this card good? If so, why? So, especially with going to four of this, and let's say Daryl has a Laura, if Chase wants to play something that's four toughness or less, less again, Daryl then has the opportunity to go, you know, Laura, Laura into double uh, banish if he wants to. Go. Costume. You got it. Super greeds. Where the greedies? Where the greedies? Um, swing for four. Thirty-six. Oh, he didn't block. Dang, he figured it out. Uh, Castellora. You got it. This, hold on. This might be actually a mandatory shuffle effect. I don't think this. I might have missed this other games. Uh, you may. Oh, okay, no. No, it's a made to search for a prince, so you don't have to shuffle if you don't want to. I'm looking for. I'm looking for another Laura. Apparently, they're just hiding out in my deck somewhere. They're all hanging out together. All at the top. Where are they? There we go. I'm gonna cast this Laura. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna shortcut here a little bit. <sighs> Find the other Laura. Sack these two Laura. I'm gonna gloves the second one. Oh snap! I mean, do I want to get rid of that? How much care do you have? How many cards do you have? Three. I mean, getting to burn a glimpse on that is kind of okay. But unless we have another Cinderella in our hand, I mean, him having one Elvish Priest isn't really that important. Go ahead. Got it. And I did fetch for another Laura, so... We're just kind of hoping we draw a Cheshire Cat this time. That would be the absolute greatest. That would go on my greatest hits album. And Chase also does have four cards in his graveyard at this point, so... Yeah, we, we actually have a, a lot of plays next turn. And hopefully none of Chase's plays involve a Gliber. But I smell a Gliber. 
especially when you're looking at, you know, 18 cards. Figuratively speaking, it's not actually 18, it's more like 6, but figuratively speaking. Play if you got it. I mean, that's a guy. He gives, oh wait, no, he should, Morgana can't play the first turn, right? No, she just came to play this oh, turn. She? Oh, yeah, that's right. Killer Man, you play some more. Yep. You're good. Savage. So, Chase probably just hoping to double Gliber himself for this turn. Daryl also hoping that he double Gliber himself. I'll add white. Uh oh, oh man, triple Gliber! Oh! Wow. Ah, the dream has been lived! Go. Um, oh wait, I can't judge. Yeah, that's right. Because I got a card that says you gotta pay for that. Now, normally, if you're going against any non-dark Alice player, I'm just gonna play one and then judgment, or two and then judgment. Oh yeah. yeah. Look at this guy. I oh. Chase just figured it out. So against any non-dark Alice player, this would have been pretty much a game, a turn that wins you the game on the spot. Hmm. Um, there is next to nothing other decks from the format can do against this, unless you have a green Valentina and a stacked graveyard already. Um, like which by turn four isn't necessarily the hardest thing to do, but Daryl has tapped out. I'm tapped out. Oh. Well, he does have five counters and a uh... exile three cards from your graveyard. How would he be getting? Like I'm trying to figure out if there's some tricky way he can glimpse me. I mean, I don't know what I'm even afraid of glimpsing. You can't glimpse the guard or the judgment. Uh, I'm gonna respond to the play turn. Okay. Whatever. Name five. Sweet. We got one. We did it. Um, so in doing this, Chase is feeling pretty good that he still has two Gliders right. in his hand now. I mean, it does make it a lot harder to cast them. So I'm kind of okay with. I I just want them off the board. I don't. I'm not super particular about where they go. Filter. I have to be really cautious about my God's art because he's seen I think about half of his deck at this point. So. Chase is a good player. He, know, he knows what's going to beat him, so he's going to find that glimpse and hang on to it. Like, he doesn't glimpse my Cinderella activation without having another one. I mean, the play's good, but the play's not that good to just get God's arted because of it. Well, Chase also realized that he's going to be seeing a ton of extra cards in this matchup, and knowing that you weren't going to judgment right away, so he, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's probably he true. saw 12... 12 extra cards at this seen, point by yeah, now? I've seen a bazillion. And he put in two two or three glimpses, I forget. Uh, but there's there's a good chance that he saw the second one by now. Cinderella has a block. Tacky. Uh, tacky. Mm -hmm. You have one open right now? Yep. I'm going to... Uh, I mean, I guess a block. Okay. Second so to herself. Oh. Oh. Try to next level. Draw. That's a pretty good draw. Hmm. So we have one open main use. Like do we just I okay, know him having the him having the Gliber makes me extremely cautious. I think we're just cat's never a bad place to start. Never good. It's never a good place to start. I, mean, I think we're gonna put that back. Um, be aggressive. Be be aggressive. Trying to be aggressive. <laughs> I'm gonna play another barrier over shadows. Neat. Got it. So never used in my regalia again. Pretty much. I mean, that seems seems good. Seems relevant. Uh, we're gonna cast a Cinderella. Uh, gosh, what is that one open man? I mean, I mean, we're gonna. Uh, I don't want to lose my it could be anything. Like, I'm trying to think. What does he have in his deck that can punish me here?
We are at a roll. All right, we lived it. We, we're alive here. Wait, hold on. Yeah. That target attack. Cool. Uh, I should have just touched got that in. Uh, swing me. Oh, I just, just played sorry, it. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, go ahead. Play all these Cinderella's like it could be used about which one's which. Filter. Yeah. It's like the double barrier's pretty good. It's definitely going to slow down the amount of counters that you can get, which is really, really good for us. Meow. I did that because I don't want him to be able to glide her here. Okay. Um, I think it's the same plan. Sacks in a roller or so. Gets the morgue off the board, which is always good. Knowing that Chase's deck has a really hard time dealing with a J ruler it lets me oh, just like not care about that sort of stuff. That sounds like a glimpse of Kaguya to me, but what is um, I mean at this point you're very far ahead, so you you don't even care about resolving the god art, you just want to attack his yeah, life total I mean, and be like, as aggressive as possible. We're just, we're just bashing at home at this point. I mean we're gonna play this. I'm gonna assume it resolves. So there's any kind of holdings there. Don't I? There's one Zeke's. Oh, there's one Zeke's. Are you gonna Zeke's it? No. Okay. Then I'm gonna grab a Carmilla. Then I'm gonna cast another Cinderella. Are you gonna Zeke's that? We're kind of shortcutting here a little bit. Nope, not gonna Zeke's the trouble. Not gonna Cinderella. I will pass my turn. Mm. Versus video ever. I blame him. I do too. Blame resolves. What? <laughs> it's a cat. Duh. Sadness is in the fact. You got it. Drop turn. Yep. Like anytime the Alice's World player at uh, Alice's World like that, I'm I'm okay with it. Just that. Yeah. 
and we're, we're doing the Gwyver dance. We want to make sure that we stop him from being able to cast one. I mean, you could just cast one for three. And you could. And then he could have good analysis rule, though. Which is, well, he's cost one. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to analyze it. Oh, my bad. But yeah, with that Camille in hand that Daryl just tutored up, uh, he's feeling in a very strong position to win this game with having that 9-9 nine -nine beater every single turn. It might not seem like a lot of damage, but every turn you are able to board wipe the Alice's World player and push them back really helps out in just getting that extra damage every turn. Stones are so I wish I was better in this game with one more stones. He's in there. He paid what? Three for that? Yeah, he paid three. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He already called the stone. Oh yeah, but he's got that. He's got the elder trees there. Where did that guy just come to play? Sir? No, not just coming to play. Sir. Oh boy. It was Windcat Gwyber. Uh, hold on. Maybe the response to the Gwyber then. Sure. Um, the sack he's doing. We're gonna close it. Uh, I'm gonna sack the Laura. Okay, and that's that's enough to keep him off of Alice's world. Wiper resolves. We almost went full hand and just sacked our board, but then I realized that there's no need to. Pester. Our hand is just straight gas at this point. Uh, synchronize. Flop. Wanna stunning to death with it? Yeah. Um, Darn playing this matchup. <laughs> So, we were running short on time anyways. Uh, Daryl definitely should have just let his opponent play with himself, keep the Cinderella till next turn. Then he had the Cinderella into Demon Flame for a complete board wipe that would have just put Chase out of the game. Um, so there you have it guys, Cinderella is the new format's MVP, especially if everyone's going to be on Alice's World. So if you're expecting a Resonator heavy focused meta, uh, Cinderella is actually very, very, very well positioned right now. Uh, so we're, we ran super long, we won't keep you guys any longer. If you have, we'll have deck spotlight up for both these decks sometime in the very, very near future. Thank you for watching once again, and we'll catch you on the next Six Sages Gaming video brought to you guys by Gamers Gauntlet. Have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and leave us a comment with what you thought of the video. Don't forget to subscribe to Six Age Gaming and check out some of the deck spotlights, dual series, and force of community videos that are already on the channel. We also have a Facebook and a Twitter, so feel free to find us there. Lastly, if you have a deck that you would like featured in a video, be sure to drop us a comment below. Until next time, take it easy.